Hello, we're Ron. This is Dr. E. And for today, pag-uusapan naman natin kung paano natin intindihin at isulat ang biconditional statements. Noong mga nakaraang lesson na pag Tuunan natin ang pansin yung conditional statement and for today, pag-uusapan naman natin ang biconditional statement. Ano nga ba ang conditional state, ang biconditional statement at paano natin to isinusulat at ina-analyze given our hypothesis and conclusion? Ito yung ating formal definition ng ating biconditional statement na kung saan biconditional statement is equivalent to writing a conditional statement and its converse. For a biconditional statement, we use the phrase if and only if. So yan yung tinatawag nating biconditional statement na nagmula daw sa conditional statement at ang operation na gagamitin natin ngayon or verbal operation and symbolic operation ay yung ating if and only if statement. So paano ba natin ito gagamitin at paano natin sinusulat ang biconditional statement? So in this example, write the conditional or write the given biconditional statement as a conditional statement and its converse. So itong example natin na ito, two angles are supplementary if and only if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So, paano natin ito paghihiwalayin as a conditional statement and converse ng conditional statement, kailangan siyempre natin ng ating hypothesis at ng ating conclusion. So, ang ating P dito ay yung the two angles are supplementary or yung ating first part ng ating con um, biconditional statement. At yung ating second part would be yung ating conclusion, the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees. So ang una natin gagawin ay sulatin yung kanyang conditional statement mula sa biconditional statement. So if then form yung ine-expect nating pamamaraan ng pagsulat ng ating uh, statement na kung saan meron na tayong P at meron na tayong Q. So, meron tayong if two angles are supplementary, then the sum of their measure is 180 degrees. So, yan yung ating conditional at para mabuo yung ating tinatawag na converse, babalik rin lang natin yung position ni P at ni Q. Kaya yung ating converse dito would be if two angles or if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, then the angles are supplementary. So, yan yung conditional and converse ng ating biconditional statement knowing na yung ating P ay the two angles are supplementary at yung ating QI, the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees. Now, yung ating mga notations or symbols na tinatawag, so alam na natin yung notation or symbol for conditional statement. So sa conditional statement, gumagamit tayo ng arrow to the right. So P, then Q can be formed this way. At yung ating tinatawag namang by conditional, at meron tayong prefix na by, which means two, ito yung ating two-tailed, Arrow. So, ibig sabihin yan, by conditional statement, yung ginagamit natin. At yan yung ating symbol associated with this particular statement in mathematics. So, paano ba natin ito gagamitin? Ito, we can read this as P if and only if Q. So, yan yung pagbasa from symbolic form to its verbal Form. At kung meron tayong example ng biconditional statement na P and Q, tulad nung kanina, meron tayong two angles are supplementary if and only if the sum of their measure is 180 degrees. And knowing ng ating P and Q are defined, pwede natin siyang isulat in symbol form like so. So ang basa dito sa P if and only if Q ay parehas nung statement na nakikita natin sa ating slide. Now, 
Ang symbolic form ng ating if and only if operation ay yung dalawang arrow or yung ating double-sided arrow. Or pwede din naman natin gamitin yung kanyang verbal form which is IFF. So minsan ginagamit natin yung daglat na yan to denote a biconditional statement. So paano naman kung yung ating biconditional statement ay true? Kailan ba natin ito mga classify as a true statement and according to definition, the biconditional statement is true if and only if both the conditional and its converse are true. So, kailangan parehas na true statement yung ating conditional at yung kanyang converse para masabi natin itong true statement ng biconditional statement. So, kung ang ating P, may bago na tayong conclusion at saka hypothesis. So, yung ating P is a closed figure is a triangle, and yung Q natin, it has three sides. So kung susulat natin yung kanyang conditional statement P, then Q, so ang ating statement would be, if a closed figure is a triangle, then it has three sides. So kung uh, kukuna natin yan ng diagram, yung ating conditional statement na P, then Q, kung meron daw tayong triangle at ito ay triangle, makikita natin na yung ating triangle ay may 1, 2, 3 sides. So, yung ating P, then Q, we can say that this is true. At yung kanya namang converse, which means yung ating Q and P ay mag-iiba ng position, yung ating statement would become if a closed figure has three sides, then it is a triangle. Nakakaisip ba kayo ng other shape other than triangle na merong three sides? Di ba wala? So, ibig sabihin yan, true statement pa rin yung converse kasi kung gagawa tayo ng figure 1, 2, 3, meron tayong three sides at triangle pa rin yung nabuo nating figure. Kaya, yung kanyang conditional at yung kanyang converse ay true. Kaya, yung ating biconditional statement na P if and only if Q ay true statement. O, ba Para lang tayong nag- coach ng basketball. But this is how we're able to articulate this type of statement in mathematics. So, paano natin masasabi na true statement ang biconditional statement? Kapag 1, true ang conditional statement and 2, true ang converse ng ating conditional. So, let's have another example and let's see if yung ating example ay maaari nating gawing true statement ng biconditional. So, yung ating susunod na example, if x is equal to 5, then x squared is equal to 25, na kung saan ang ating hypothesis or P is x is equal to 5, at ang ating Q ay x squared is equal to 25. Now, to prove that this is a true statement na biconditional, kailangan yung ating conditional statement na P, then Q, ay true statement. So kung meron tayong P na x is equal to 5, Ko isusulat natin yan in P, then Q form. If x is equal to 5, then x squared is equal to 25. So, true ba yung ating statement or conditional statement na yan? Siyempre, dahil kung isasubstitute natin si 5 dito kay x squared, 5 squared is still 25. So, true statement yung ating conditional statement. Ang titingnan na lang natin ay kung yung ating converse ay true pa din. So, paano natin malalaman or matche-check kung true pa rin yung ating statement? So, babalita rin natin yung position ni Q at saka ni P. So, let's say yung ating Q then P which is our converse ang statement natin would become if x squared is equal to 25, then x is equal to 5. Now, ang tanong dito ay kung true pa rin yung ating statement dito sa ating converse. I don't think so dahil yung ating conclusion ngayon, yung ating Q ngayon, 
makakahanap pa rin tayo ng value ng x that would equal to 25, which means finding a counterexample or an example for our hypothesis that would make it true but our conclusion is false. Dahil kung ang ating x ay equal to negative 5 at in-square natin yan, ang sagot pa rin is 25 equals 25. So nakakuha tayo ng counterexample na magiging true si hypothesis pero yung ating conclusion ay now false. So according to the definition, false ngayon yung ating converse statement and when this happens, alam natin na yung ating statement or yung ating converse ay false. So therefore, hindi valid na biconditional statement ang mabubuo kung ang ating p ay x is equal to 5 at ang ating q ay x squared is equal to 25 dahil hindi siya reversible. So kapag ka nangyari yan, hindi siya matuturing na valid or true statement ng biconditional statement. So yan yung inyong dapat tandaan na related rin dun sa mga previous lessons natin about conditional statement that needs to be or can be true or sometimes it can also be false depending on how you articulate and how you think or reason out doon sa conclusion na meron tayo base sa ating mga hypothesis. Kaya ang ating number bender challenge for the day is to write an example of conditional statement that is irreversible. So short as saying na yung kailangan yung gami, gawing by conditional statement is a true statement. At yan yung ating lesson ngayon sa geometry on biconditional statement. Tandaan lang natin kung kailan magiging true ang ating biconditional statement. At kailangan alamin natin kung paano tayo mag-formulate ng conditional at ng converse ng ating conditional statement to be able to understand kung anong ibig sabihin ng IFF or if and only if phrase sa mathematics. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!